Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Hope you guys are having a chill day today. In this video, we're gonna be discussing the NEAR protocol. I think generally speaking, crypto is entering a new phase of growth. And during this adoption phase, I think we're just gonna see innovation cycles. And the key to being successful in this environment is anticipating where that large ball of capital is gonna rotate into next. Currently, what I've been observing is that you have these emerging layer ones like NEAR, Cosmos, Polkadot, Terra, who are all getting investments through ecosystem funds first to build up core DeFi primitives. And once they have that solid foundation, they're going to add more layers on top. You're going to see NFTs, you're going to see DAOs, the metaverse, gaming. I mean, those are just the hot themes of today, but you can expect many more in the future. So again, the key here is to figure out which layer one is about to go through its massive expansionary phase, its Cambrian explosion phase when it comes to DeFi protocols and begin allocating and farming as much as you can. Because during the initial stages, you have a higher chance of picking winners because first movers tend to have a huge advantage. And secondly, because it's relatively new, the yields are gonna be substantially higher. And because of this outlook, I've decided to do this video review on NEAR because I think a huge ball of capital from ETH heads is about to pour in. And so after I give you the brief introduction, I'll also cover a few DeFi protocols that are offering massive yields that you can take advantage of today. And before we dive into the video, I wanted to quickly plug the project that I'm working on. It's called Samurai Monkeys and we're gonna be minting on Avalanche sometime in Q1. And basically what we're doing is we're creating an open collaborative that anybody can join by purchasing one of these NFTs. And the long-term goal is to basically pool capital in a treasury, have it deployed across a few DeFi protocols, generate yield, and use that yield to purchase MetaFi and GameFi assets that are productive. And once we start generating consistent yield, the plan is to disseminate a portion of this yield on a regular basis to NFT holders. If that sounds intriguing to you guys, click the Samurai Monkey Discord in the description below or at the very least make sure you follow the samurai monkeys on twitter now with that plug out of the way let's go ahead and dive into this video so before i give you the intro to near and i talk about the DeFi protocols I created this diagram to show you the growth cycle of the layer one protocols. So typically what happens is you have a team that either begins building to show investors a minimum viable product so they get funding, or if they have a track record of being super successful, oftentimes they'll get a huge amount of money even before they begin building the product just on the concept alone. Now, after they've raised this money from investors, their respective tokens now have an ample amount of liquidity on the secondary markets. This means the miners, the people that are operating the nodes have sufficient financial incentives to begin contributing to the network by setting up nodes or mining. Now, once the nodes are set up, the system becomes more distributed. Of course, like with any other network, initially you're gonna have a high amount of centralization to begin with, but long-term, provided that they're successful in their efforts, you should see progressive decentralization of the network. And so when you have progressive decentralization, you have more people operating these nodes. It'll improve the overall functionality of the entire network, which allows the network to scale and accommodate high transaction volume. Now, after the functionality improves, that's when you see developers get onboarded. Now, some of this might be organic, but in many cases, the most successful networks typically end up having ecosystem funds to accelerate the growth and onboard devs. Now, once these devs get onboarded and we see projects being deployed on these networks, that does a few things. Number one, it creates opportunity for speculators and investors because ultimately that's what's attracting various groups of people into the network. It's the prospects of extracting monetary value for putting time in. And also if they're building products and services that people actually need and use, that'll compel people to create wallets and interact with the platforms that are building these services and products. Now, the key is obviously trying to identify these opportunities super early. So if you recognize the opportunity and you're able to access the early rounds, you stand to make the most amount of money when the network is widely adopted and used. But obviously at that stage, you're taking on a tremendous amount of risk. So in my opinion, the best time to really come in is once they're establishing ecosystem funds to accelerate the growth. Because not only are these ecosystem funds set up to accelerate the development, but they're also incentivized to get more people onboarded, more users to get on 
onboarded into the network. So the safe play would be just to buy the network token and sit on it. But if you wanted to extract more value, then you could, for example, yield farm, you can invest in early stage projects that are building on top of the network. And there's numerous opportunities to earn airdrops just for interacting with these. And in my opinion, Near is right here. There's an $800 million ecosystem fund that was set up. And over the next few months, I expect it to have a material impact on the price of the Near token, but also in terms of the total TVL, total value lock within the network. And so let me know what you guys think of this. Like, do you guys agree with my outlook here? Or do you guys disagree with it? Is there anything that I'm missing? All right, now that you guys have a pretty good understanding of these growth cycles, let me give you a quick and brief introduction to Near. And to help guide me, I'm gonna use the newsletter that I published on Saturday, where I cover various yield opportunities. And about 95% of the content that I produce is for free. If you guys wanted to get my newsletter emailed to you, all you need to do is click the link in the description below and enter your email address. But anyhow, Near is an open source blockchain that employs a distributed computing system which uses a proof of stake consensus mechanism to validate transactions. And it's hoping to be a superior alternative to Ethereum in a few ways. Number one, it has a high throughput, meaning that it's super fast. It's a, in ideal conditions, it can accommodate 100,000 transactions per second. So it's about 50X faster than Ethereum. Fees are super low. It's about one cent per transaction, which is a lot lower than Ethereum's average, about $5 per transaction. It has low latency, meaning the time to confirm blocks is very fast. And unlike Ethereum, they've already figured out sharding. I don't have a strong development background, but I do know that this sharding business is gigabrain stuff. They're gonna begin sharding January, 2022, but they're not gonna be fully sharded until Q3 of this year. In fact, they're not gonna have a fully functional shard mainnet until Q4 of 2022. And as I mentioned in the previous segment of the video, they have an $800 million ecosystem fund. And this fund is going to help catalyze the development of DeFi protocols. That's going to be their main focus. And eventually this capital will reach projects that are focused on gaming, DAOs, and NFTs. And how I've seen this work in real life, for example, I have a buddy who lives in Munich and he's actually flying over to Dubai and meeting up with one of his buddies who recently purchased LimeWire. And he has a track record of success. I mean, he built a startup and sold it for $10 million. And because of him being successful and the fact that he's now pursuing another venture, Ripple and Avalanche reached out to him, offering him money to incentivize him to build on their respective ecosystems. And I would imagine that Nier is probably gonna take the similar approach. This way they can lure in entrepreneurs to build their products out on Nier versus other layer one chains. Now, when it comes to the DeFi stuff, a lot of it's currently going on Aurora, which is an EVM. And the main impetus for this EVM is to make it easier for developers to fork projects from other EVM networks. Because you already have quality core DeFi primitives built on other chains. And rather than reinventing the wheel, it's a lot easier to just fork the code and deploy it. That way you get significant economic activity within a relatively short period of time. And the reason I wanted to distinguish the two is because Near itself is getting the $800 million ecosystem fund. Aurora got $12 million from a funding round. And so it's completely separate from Near itself. But in my opinion, due to its proximity to Near, I think Aurora will indirectly benefit from all the money deployed on Near because currently all the lucrative yield farming opportunities are on Aurora. And for those of you guys that follow my work on the regular, to better contextualize or conceptualize this, Near is like crypto.com and Aurora is like Kronos, which means that if you want to transfer assets from Near to Aurora, you'll have to wrap them first. And if you're interested in learning how to do that, make sure you watch this video in its entirety and the last segment will cover exactly how you bridge over your assets. All right, so now that you've gotten a brief introduction to Nier and Aurora and you understand the difference between the two, let's cover all the DeFi protocols that have been launched so far. But before we do that, let me show you guys some useful resources real quick. This is aurora.dev slash ecosystem. It displays a lot of the protocols that are out there. So I'll link this in the description below because even though it's not comprehensive, it does have a large list of protocols. This way you can reference them at your leisure. Also, this deck screener is a pretty useful tool in terms of charting a lot of these DeFi tokens that aren't listed on CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko. They can be found here on deck screener. And it's also a pretty good way to identify tokens that have been just recently launched. For example, you can come over here to the right, organize it by market cap liquidity but just be super cautious because if it's new there's a higher possibility that you could get rugged 
or maybe they've set up some sort of contract that empties your wallet when you interact with the token. But nonetheless, I highly recommend that you guys use Dex Screener. And lastly, I love using DeFi Llama because it helps you track the TVL across the various layer one chains. And if we scroll down here, you'll find Aurora. It has about $600 million locked in it. And if you compare it to other chains, that's relatively a small number. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look at a few of these DeFi protocols. The first one that I'm gonna cover is Trisolaris. It has the highest amount of TVL out of all the protocols. It's the first automated market maker that launched on Aurora. So in other words, you can think of it as a Uniswap of Aurora for the moment. And in my newsletters, if you just click the link, you'll be redirected to the website. So here you can actually provide liquidity and earn the following yield farming rewards. Now, I would rate this as one of the safer protocols. Nothing is 100% safe, but given that it's probably a Uniswap fork and we haven't seen any sort of adverse events with the Uniswap, there's a good chance that our funds are gonna be safe here. Personally, since I think we're in an up only market at the moment, I probably provide liquidity to the East slash near pool to optimize my returns. Or if you're like me, and you think Luna is gonna outperform Ethereum, then you'd probably wanna stick your capital here in this pool. But if you're just looking to farm stable coins, they have decent yields already, but this right here is probably not worth making the trip over to near. I mean, it's pretty commonplace to get anywhere between 15 and 25%, generally speaking, in DeFi. Next up, we have Rose. Rose basically provides the same service Sabre provides on Solana. It's a liquidity protocol for stable coins and wrapped assets. For now, they just have stable coin pools. Eventually, we'll see wrapped asset pools. And so for providing stable coin yield into any one of these pools, you'll get the following yields. I mean, the, currently the TVL isn't that great. If you're trading between 50 and $100,000, you should be okay in terms of slippage. But for a whale, that's probably not the way to go. And aside from being a liquidity protocol, they also are gonna allow people to borrow against their yield generating tokens. So essentially what they're doing is they're copying abracadabra money and the rose dollar that isn't out yet will serve the same purpose as MIM by using yield bearing tokens as collateral. So just like MIM, you're gonna be able to loop your collateral. For example, you use your yield bearing token to issue RUSD, you use the RDSD to convert into another stable coin, deposit it for yield, and then use your yield bearing token as collateral to borrow even more money. And since you're borrowing against a yield bearing token, it means your risk of liquidation is pretty much zero. So with the peace of mind, you can easily loop it multiple times. And by doing so, you could take your yield to potentially triple digits. Moving along, we have Nearpad, which is a launchpad at its core, but their long-term objective is to create a DeFi hub. So in addition to their launchpad, they've built out this automated market maker, which to me looks like a fork of SushiSwap. And if you provide liquidity to any one of these pools, you can get the following yields here. I mean, I don't see any yields that really stand out to me. Given that they've been out for some time now, the yields have been diluted down to the market average on Aurora, but they're also currently working on a yield aggregator. Soon you'll be able to take your LP tokens here and deposit them in the aggregator to auto compound your yield. Nothing crazy innovative happening here, but this is another option or another place you could potentially deploy your funds. Next up, we have WannaSwap, which is another DEX. And it came out a little bit after Trisolaris and its TVL is 108 million. I think that's probably because it wasn't the first DEX on Aurora. And this is another one that's basically a fork of SushiSwap. But one thing that they're doing differently or unique is adding different pairs. For example, you have BNB near and AVEX near that's coming up. And they also have this referral scheme. So for example, if you click my referral link and you guys end up farming on WannaSwap, I'll get a portion of your yield farming rewards. Another protocol that's new is Paper Printer Finance. It's not new, but it's new to the Aurora ecosystem. They're basically doing what Basis Cash did, but their approach is somewhat nuanced. And they're already deployed on a few other chains. They're currently deployed on BSC, Polygon, Phantom, Qcoin, and OEC. And basically what these logarithmic stablecoin protocols do is they use this elastic supply model to maintain the peg of their stablecoin to the dollar. And so generally speaking, what you see happen is if the price of their stablecoin goes above a dollar, they'll increase the supply, which incentivizes people to sell, bringing the peg down closer to a dollar or a little bit below a dollar. And in circumstances where the peg goes below a dollar through their incentivization scheme, they try to reduce the supply or increase the buy pressure to bring the peg back to $1. Right now their core product isn't available on Aurora, but they do have some auto compounding volts sourced from Trisolaris. 
So if you bring your LP token from Trisolaris over here to Paper Printer, you can auto compound your yields. Moving along, we have another DEX called Aurora Swap. And since this is new compared to the previous two DEXs, as you can expect the yields to be a lot higher. I mean, if you look here, they have some pretty competitive yields for stable coins, the near slash ETH pool, the near slash WBTC pool over 100%. They also have a ETH slash BTC pool at 70%. Personally, I deposited my funds here in the near slash Luna pool, which at that time was yielding over a thousand percent, but now is yielding 125%. And like WannaSwap, they have some unique pairs that are already deployed. In fact, you can earn yield on near slash BNB. They have near slash AVEX, near slash Matic. Now, given that this is one of the newer protocols, you are taking on more risk because even though I don't think we're going to see as many rugs as we saw on the Binance Smart Chain, I still think we're going to see a few of these get compromised, especially ones that are innovating and we could potentially see some rugs. So definitely be cognizant of that before you guys ape into the newer protocols. I think the protocols that were launched early that have a lower yield are probably the best bet for you guys that are risk adverse. All right, next up we have Pickle Finance. For you OGs out there, I'm sure you guys aren't new to this protocol at all. It was originally launched on Ethereum and now has expanded over to Aurora. And basically it's a yield aggregator with its own token. You can either farm the token and dump it, or you can actually lock the token, get a yield boost, and also get a share of the revenue. And like I've stated in the past, make sure you guys always double check to see if it's APY versus APR. I always find it super annoying when they post APY because I could care less about the APY. I care more about what the APR is, which isn't too difficult to figure out. You can come over here to one of the calculators on the internet and just convert APY to APR. And this isn't a bad place to auto compound your yields. They've been in the industry for a while. They're trusted. They have been compromised in the past, but since then they've been pretty secure. However, when it comes to staking your pickle, it doesn't look like you can do that just yet. So it's basically just an auto compounding protocol for now. Now, about two weeks ago, they stated that they're going to do an airdrop to people. So a few people who have more than $50 deposited in the vaults will randomly receive their airdrop. If you guys wanted to get more details, just go ahead and access my newsletter and click here on the link. Now I saved the most interesting and degen play for last. It's called NEC. NEC is a fully collateralized stablecoin protocol that maintains its peg with delta neutral collateral position. So in other words, it uses equal size long and short positions to back up the stablecoin. Personally, I've never heard of anything that's done that before. And to me, basically what they're doing is a combination of what Maker's doing, DYDX and OM. We won't go into their fee scheme and how it's redirected back to neck holders. Instead, we'll cover how they're very similar to Olympus. So it's incentivized demand for their LP position. They've actually adopted Olympus's model for protocol to own liquidity. So bond discounts are offered to those who purchase Endol slash NEC LP tokens. And after five days, users can actually just sell their LP tokens for profits provided that the price is somewhat stable or has moved up. Now you have to be careful because at certain times the discounts are at 0%. So there's really no strong incentive to buy the LP and lock it up for five days. And it's also an issue because it lowers the demand for the LP. And since the demand is lowered, that means that there's less people that are buying the token off the secondary market. Personally, I'd rather just buy the rebasing token and neck because it's comparable to buying the ohm token and staking it instead of staking it you're just given a rebase token and currently you're getting an apy of 2500 percent five day rate of four and a half percent currently buying it isn't very straightforward if you guys wanted to purchase it you would have to go over to their website you would have to go ahead and mint endol using near btc eth as collateral then you take your endol over here to try solaris and exchange it for ennec now, before we move on to the next segment of the video, I wanted to say that this is not an endorsement of all of these protocols. I'm strictly covering these for educational purposes. I want to show you what kind of opportunities there are in here because I think that big ball of capital is about to roll into the entire near ecosystem. Like I stated in the first segment of the video, I think the best way for us to benefit is to number one, buy the near token, but also to begin farming and accumulate more near tokens by selling our farm to rewards. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys how to transfer your assets over to Aurora. So you have two options. You can either use the Rainbow Bridge or you can use All Bridge. The Rainbow Bridge is pretty straightforward and it's ideal for people that are transferring assets from Ethereum or near over to Aurora. 
And basically what you do is you connect your Ethereum wallet, pick the asset you want to transfer over, and it has to be an asset that's residing on both chains. So for example, Ethereum, USDT, USDC, those would be a good option. You can technically send other assets over, but I wouldn't suggest it because it takes someone who's a little bit technically savvy to get it back over to Ethereum. And you could actually select a different address to send it to. Now I'm not going to take the time to actually send it over because it's super straightforward. However, if you guys have any questions, I encourage you guys guys to watch other YouTube videos or you can let me know in the comment section below this way I can link you a video or try to help you troubleshoot your problem. Next we have Allbridge. Now the problem with Allbridge is that it only allows you to transfer over certain assets. So for example if I pick Polygon and I wanted to go ahead and transfer assets over to Aurora I could only transfer over these two tokens. But I think in time that will probably change. But for now, this is not the best option to transfer assets over to Aurora. So what you could do is if you have assets on a different chain, for example, you have them on Polygon, Civ Chain, or Harmony, I would suggest sending them over to Ethereum using Rangio Exchange. I mean, it's pretty cool. It has Thorchain already integrated, so you can actually convert native Bitcoin to various assets using this DEX aggregator. And if you guys wanted to learn more about Rangio Exchange prior to using it, I've done two video reviews. I'll link the first video that I ever did on it in the description below for you guys. My community and I use this all the time. It's a fantastic resource. So if you wanted to go ahead and give this a test run, like I said, you can actually send assets over from these chains. And then you can come back here to Rainbow Bridge and transfer your assets from Ethereum to Aurora. And once you transfer your assets over, you'll be ready to farm. Definitely make sure to reference my newsletter. I'll link the newsletter in the description below for you guys. Also, if you're watching this video weeks after I publish it and there's new protocols that are worth checking out, make sure you guys mention them in the description below. And if you're genuinely into DeFi and you want to learn more early alpha, I would strongly recommend that you guys check out my Discord channel, which is linked in the description below. We have various chains listed here. Anytime when someone finds a farm, a quality NFT project, it gets posted in here. And in many cases, we tend to find projects super early, like months ahead of them becoming very popular. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's content. This is Crypto One Step signing up. I'll talk to you folks next time. Bye.